We know at the very heart of the mission and ministry of Jesus, we know from the scriptures that healing the sick was one of the things that Jesus did everywhere he went. And they came to him in great numbers, seeking the gifts that Jesus could give them. Just as he entered the house of, of Simon and Andrew, the earliest apostles, they plead with him to, to heal Simon's mother-in-law who is sick with the fever and he, he heals her. And she immediately, we're told, begins to wait upon them. There are many times those healings are physical healings, signs of God's grace and power at work in Jesus. It was one way that people came to believe that he was who he said he was. But we know more deeply those physical healings weren't really what Jesus was concerned about. He wanted to heal the human heart broken by sin. He brought the strength that we all need on the journey of life to overcome the struggles, the difficulties that life brings. And almost everywhere he heals, he reminds those that he has healed, that their sins are forgiven. That's the greatest healing of all, that God's mercy, his compassion, that he brings to the world through the gift of his life, that gift from the Father is without measure, unconditional. We're forgiven over and over again by the hand of God any time we seek that forgiveness. That's the healing we need to remember every day as people of faith, the power of God's love that has broken into the world through the sending of Jesus. And most especially through our life in the church, we can experience that healing. The healing that comes to all of those who receive the sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus desires all of us to come to him so that we can be healed of our sins, restored and given hope, given the peace that come only to those who live in the life of the Spirit. That's the gift we celebrate today as people of faith. We have that beautiful account in our first reading of the call of Samuel. You know, all of the prophets received a call. Not all of them understood what they were being asked to do. Samuel turns to Eli several times in that beautiful reading. He thinks that he is calling him. He doesn't yet recognize the voice of God. And Eli reminds him the response is to tell the Lord that we are indeed listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. We can't really receive the word of God. We can't hear what God has to say if we do all the talking. How often in prayer do we sit in quiet in the stillness and solitude so that we can hear what God is saying? So often we pray telling God what we need, what we want, how we want him to perform, what we need him to do, and when it doesn't happen, we're disappointed. That isn't prayer. Prayer is learning to listen quietly in the stillness of our hearts to what God wants to say to us, to learn what he is asking us to do, how we are to live, where we are to go. Because just like Simon's mother-in-law, who was healed through the power of faith and began to wait on Jesus and do the work at hand. We too are called. We who have received that mercy and compassion and love of God are sent out to do the work of Jesus, to bring those same gifts into the lives of others. That's our task, the same task of Jesus to be able to forgive others, 
to bring mercy, compassion, and healing into the world that so desperately needs it. It comes through us. That's how God works. We are called to be the instruments of his peace. And so we pray for the grace and the strength to do exactly that every day of our lives. Thank you.